जय श्री माता जी सभी सहयोगी भाई बहनों का आज के ध्यान सत्र में हम स्वागत करते हैं कलेक्टिव बंधन तीन महामंत्र उसके पश्चात श्री गणेश मंत्र परम पूज्य श्री माता जी कृपावंत होकर 
हमें ध्यान में संतुलन प्रदान कीजिए इस संतुलन की अवस्था में हमें ध्यान का आनंद मिले निरानंद मिले ऐसा आशीर्वाद हमें दें परम पूज्य श्री माता जी आपकी कृपा में इस संतुलन की अवस्था में हम अपनी ध्यान की गहराई में उतर सके ऐसी स्थिति हमें प्रदान कीजिए इसी ध्यान की अवस्था में हम परम पूज्य श्री माता जी की अमृतवाणी आत्मसात करेंगे टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डू द पूजा ऑफ आदि शक्ति It's a difficult subject uh, to talk about Adi Shakti because it's not easy to understand that Adi Shakti is the power of Sadashiva. Sadashiva is the God Almighty. she is his breath as they some people call it some say she is the desire and some say that she is the entire power of sada shiva and sada shiva cannot do anything without her powers the subject <coughs> has been described by many people in various books in different ways but actually we need not go to the background of the creation of adi shakti for that at least you need seven lectures but we'll come to the point where adi shakti started working on this mother earth <clears throat> the first thing is we must know that she created a kundalini in the mother earth itself and she created shri ganesha out of the mother earth it's very interesting 
So the Mother Earth becomes a very important thing for us. If we do not know how to respect the Mother Earth, we do not know how to respect ourselves. The expression of Adishakti within you is the Kundalini, no doubt. That is the reflection of Adishakti in you. But the reflection in the Mother Earth is also expressed, as you all know, in different places, different countries, different cities, as the manifestation of chakras and Adi Shakti's creations. It was very important first to create a very holy Mother Earth for human beings to be born on them. So the reflection of the Adi Shakti as Kundalini first was on the Mother Earth. Kundalini is a, we should say, is a wee part of the Adi Shakti. Or we can say that she is the desire, pure desire of the Adi Shakti. So Adi Shakti is the desire, complete desire of Sadashiva and Kundalini, Adi Kundalini is the desire, <coughs> complete desire of Adi Shakti. Now this one was first expressed in the Mother Earth, inside the Mother Earth. Inside the Mother Earth, the Kundalini came up in such a way that it cooled down the inner part of the Mother Earth as much as it could. And then it manifested on the surface of the Earth as different chakras. So it's tremendous <coughs> similarity that we have with Virata, the Mother Earth and the human beings. If all of them are being reflected by the Adi Kundalini, so there has to be a great connection between them. It is not understood by human beings how they are connected to this Mother Earth. This Kundalini passed through different centers, creating different centers in the Mother Earth and ultimately broke through Kailasha. And I don't know how many have you been to Kailash, you'll see tremendous vibrations flowing out of Kailash. Now the way we <coughs> insult our Mother Earth, what we are doing is we are insulting the Adi Shakti. So many ways there are we should respect the Mother Earth. I mean, it was an Indian custom to begin with. When you got up from your bed and you touched the Mother Earth with your feet, you have to say, Oh Mother Earth, please forgive me because I'm touching you with my feet. All the <coughs> movements of Mother Earth are controlled by this inner Kundalini, which is the reflection of Adishat. The gravity that it has also is the manifestation of the Kundalini of the Mother Earth. 
Now why we are suffering in this beautiful planet? Because we do not respect what we have to respect the most. Mother Earth is to be respected. Meaning what? Meaning that whatever is created on this Earth, by the movement of the Earth, by the sea, by all the elements, has to be respected. Today's problem is pollution, all kinds of things people talk of. The reason behind it, people never understood the importance of all these five elements which are supportive of our life. So to respect the Mother Earth, pe people do Bhumi Puja. Many people, when they are building a house, they will do the Bhumi Puja, means they will respect the Mother Earth. Because if she is not being respected, maybe there could be an earthquake. Which means that this Mother Earth understand, knows and acts. It acts in such a manner that human beings don't understand why such things happen. Now we can say that in a place called Latur, it was Sri Ganesha's fourteenth day and uh, they had to submerge the statues into the sea or into the river. So they went all out, singing, dancing. After coming from there, they all started drinking. And drinking is not liked by Mother Earth at all. If you are drunk and you are walking on the road, you fall down. So happened with that drinking that a <coughs> big earthquake broke in and all those who were dancing with drinking, all of them were engulfed into that earthquake by Mother Earth. Only our center, which is there, was surrounded by a big gap, but nothing happened to our center. And not one single Sahaja Yogi was ruined by that. We can understand, because we are Sahaja Yogis, how the Mother Earth has acted to save those people who were Sahaja Yogis. So the understanding of Mother Earth about saints is very great. She knows who is a saint. She knows the feet of a saint. And that's why, you know, so many things were created, like Moses. He went to the sea and the Mother Earth came up for them to walk through. If all the Jews had walked, it would not have worked. But it was Moses and his saintliness that the Mother Earth herself came up and helped. In the same way, when Rama was building a big bridge between Lanka and India, the Mother Earth came up as a bridge. So we should not try to curse the Mother Earth for any mishaps on this earth. If people are saintly, they will be always protected by Mother Earth. She will always try to give them whatever they want. You can see in the minute way that supposing now in our Kabela here, the roses are of such a big size, such a big size roses. You won't find such big size in the whole world, but we have here such big ones. In uh, Pratishthan we had flowers 
of sunflower so big as that. One man could not lift it. Now, how is it all this is happening in particular places? Is the Mother Earth, who knows who is living here, who is walking on this, on her back, we should say, or on her soil, because Mother Earth understands vibration. Now, certain places, we say that are very holy. How have they discovered that these places are holy? Because of magnetic forces. The magnetic forces in England, I was surprised, were crossing each other at a place called Oxted where we lived. They were crossing since long, but we <laughs> lived there later on. So, Mother Earth also organizes and arranges things for saintly people. It's very interesting to see how the Mother Earth guides you in a proper way. I mean, I don't know how many instances I can give you, but we don't understand the value of the understanding of this Mother Earth and her loving protection for all the saints. In the same way, <coughs> we have to understand how the whole atmosphere, the rain, comes in at the right time, the moon, the sun, uh, everything works out in such a beautiful manner because they know it's a saint. They know these are saintly people sitting there. They know that they are pure people, that they are the essence of life and they should be looked after, they should be cared for, they should be bothered for. It is not bothered about people who are of no use. For example, now for Hajj, so many people went and so many were killed. Some went to Amarnath and they were killed because they were not saints, just ritualistic people going for a ritual which, in the discretion of the Mother Earth, was of no avail and of no uh, advantage. But nobody learns from this. Nobody learns. When so many people were going to say Amarnath were killed, Pakistan said, see, they should not have gone to this Amarnath, it's a false place, why did they go there? And uh, by going there, uh, what has proved is that it's not a holy place. But when the Hajj thing took place, they had nothing to say. They didn't know how to explain this Hajj business and the dying of so many people. The reason is this, that these people have been going to Hajj all the time. Once there was a stampede with 32,000 people being injured and troubled and killed. Now this is it. Now what is Mother Earth suggesting? That good going to these places Holy places, they are really holy, no doubt, going to these places. You are not doing any spiritual ascent. You are not achieving anything by going to these places which are really holy. That cannot be challenged. They are a holy places. You must be knowing that I was born in Chidwara. And Mecca and Chidwara are on the same cancer line. How is it? What is about Mecca? Mecca is Makteshwar Shiva, it's a Shiva. Why did Muhammad Sahib ask people to worship a stone? He didn't believe in stones, he was against all kinds of idol worship. Then why did he say this black stone which is there has to be worshipped, for that people have to go? What was the reason? Because he could feel the vibration, he could feel that it's a swambo. So he said it. So all the Muslims like mad are going there. By going there, nobody has improved. I have not seen 
anybody improve by going to Mecca. It's just a kind of a ritual. They think if they go there, when they will die tomorrow, they will tell God, see, now we have a certificate, we have been to Mecca. Like our Pope, once upon a time, used to give certificate that when you go to heaven, you can show the certificate that now you are a real Christian. In this way, all these artificial things came up. But there is reality behind it. The difference is the reality is for the real people and not for false people. <coughs> but this ritualism has grown too much. Like in India, we have many uh, swayambhus created by the Kundalini, again I would say, and which are really worshipped. I've been to most of them and I was surprised that uh, most of the pujaris were suffering from some sort of a serious disease, like one was a paralyzed fellow. He said, we are serving this God here and you said, this is swayambhu, then, Mother, how, why is it we are suffering from this disease? I said, because you are just making money. You can't make money out of God. If you don't want to serve God, you don't stay here. But if you want to serve God, then you can stay here, but don't make money out of this. <coughs> it's very common, I've seen, those people who make money get paralysis. I've seen it. It's a very deep, understanding. All these elements, Mother Earth, everybody has about everything. Because their Kundalini is not like your Kundalini, which is, though in itself, is pure. But because of your human endeavors, human mistakes, ego, super-ego, all sorts of nonsense. The Kundalini is not so sensitive, nor does it tell you what is happening. It has to be very alert, sensitive spirituality within you, by which you can say immediately what you think, what you know, what you understand about anything. But the problem is that this doesn't exist. Why is it you should not be so sensitive? On the contrary, I have seen if their mind works against somebody, then they start saying, you are catching on this, you are catching on that, you are catching on it. Actually, the person who is saying that is catching. So, with this thing one has to understand that if we are the true reflection of Adi Shakti, then we should be pure, absolutely pure, like the white snow. Even one black drop, that's why I wore today the white side, falls on the white, it shows. You should be so white, that anything, any minute black spot also should be seen by you and in others also to be felt by you. If that height is achieved by pure life, by pure thinking, by pure heart. It is not necessary to manipulate anything, no, no need to talk. It's all natural like the Mother Earth is. Does she manipulate anything? Nothing. Just see how spontaneous she is. You put a seed in the Mother Earth and see how it sprouts. She's so spontaneous. Her activity is so spontaneous, we never wonder about it. See, different types of flowers, different types of fragrance, different heights of shrubs and trees, how she grows with such balance in every place, in every minute atom 
and molecule of that mother earth there is sense so before us is the best reflection of the adi shakti and that is this mother earth so first we must respect the mother earth i like you people because you are sitting on the ground is very good for meditation if you can sit on the mother earth it will be extremely good because the special quality of the mother earth which also i have unfortunately that i suck your problems she to sucks your problem and when she sucks your problem you get rid of them without any difficulties so if you cannot say sit on the ground then you take a stone better is or you can have a marble or something which is natural on which you should try to sit but if you sit on the plastic and do your meditation i don't know what is going to help you the plastic that's why i have request you always that you use natural things because natural things can absorb your problems very well unnaturally also we live otherwise you see it is on the physical line also on mental line on mental line what do we do that we go on arguing uh explaining It's going on and on and on and on this so into it one should get headache you see actually with all that but if you are spontaneous if you are very spontaneous immediately you know what the other fellow is trying to do or to say or to commun- communicate you don't need much thinking about it because you can absorb even the thought of another person absorb doesn't mean that you take the bad thing of that person but it's like a sieving out you absorb what another person is saying and you sieve it out now the problem of this adi shakti is this that i decided that i will have all of you enter into my body absorb all of you it's a very dangerous game i know but i did play because i'm supposed to do at this stage of time that i should absorb you all in my body so with you all your problems are also gone into me all your troubles also have gone into me but by absorbing it see it's like ocean into which you are put and the you are cleansed but what about the ocean ocean has got still your problems and things lingering and they are very troubles so the best thing would be for you to cleanse yourself cleansing is very important through introspection but doesn't mean thinking never means thinking but introspection means meditation and that you all should meditate i must tell you we had a meeting of the leaders and they came out and sat in the drawing as soon as they assembled i had such a severe pain in the stomach and i had such a bad diarrhea that can't be now who has got those problems i don't know <clears throat> who has brought these problems i don't know but as a mother as a mother i don't mind anything as long as you all get well and purified just like as the mother earth cares for you i also care for and just like as the mother earth loves you i also love you whether you are bad or good is not the point but to be kind to me if you could try to be really good surgeons not a show offs not business like not only thinking type not argumentative not criticizing others if you just try to meditate every day 10 to 15 minutes i tell you my health will be first
because I have taken your injections inside and they start torturing my life for nothing at all. See, so, now it's a risk I've run and I'm sure you are all very sensible people and you'll understand that your mother shouldn't suffer. This is everyday crucifixion for me sometimes, you know, and I don't know what to say. For example, the other day in uh, Delhi, one gentleman who is a leader came to me to see me and my one foot started moving <laughs> and paining so much. I mean, I didn't know what to tell him that you get out now because I just can't hurt him, you know. But I say, what's the matter? Where have you been? What did you do? And so he realized and he went out and really it improved. Nearness also, I think, has an effect because if a man like that is, or a lady like that, is full of problems and she comes very much closer to my attention, then I have to take up the cross, it's like this. A very simple understanding should be that why are we in Sahaja Yoga? We are in Sahaja Yoga to ascend, to go higher and higher as you sang yesterday. It was very entertaining yesterday the way you talked about your ambition to be higher and higher. Really it was very joy-giving, no doubt. But what are we doing about it? What are we trying about it, we should say. Seriously, we must think, are we meditating? Are we all doing something to elevate others also, to give realizations to others? Especially women I have seen don't do much of this, which is very bad because you are the mothers. You have to go all out to give realizations to others. But men are more active that way and women are not. So it works the other way round. Now on one side, the men are, I think, are active but don't meditate. Women meditate and men do the outside work, sort of a part-time or you can call it a good uh, labor division that you meditate at home and we'll go all out. It's not going to work out. So one has to meditate, and one has to also go out to spread such. Both things have to be done. Supposing now you meditate and you don't spread Sadhguru, you will never ascend. Because after all, this Kundalini, you see, she's a sensible woman, eh? she's very sensible. She thinks, why should I make her a saint? What is the use? Sahaja Yoga is not individualistic. It's not for one person to become a saint and sit somewhere, it's not like that. It's not meant for one person, for oneself. It's not individualistic. It's a collective happening. So if you are not helping to the collective, Kudali says, all right, you are all right as it is. Just like our body. See, in our body, if one organ says, all right, now I'm all right, I'm not going to work out, or one cell says that I'm not going to now grow, it's all right, why should I worry about the whole body? It won't. It's a living, it's a living organism, I've told you hundred times. When it is a living organism, it has to grow. It has to grow and also to absorb. To have energy, you have to meditate, and you have to grow. If you don't grow, you are finished. You are no more a Sajogi. I wouldn't call a person a Sajogi who has not even given one person realization. Cannot be a Sajogi. Sajogi has to give realizations to others. Apart from other activities, the main activity should be how we give realizations to others. Unless and until we really look after that side of life, we can never, never grow in such. For example, now take my position, I'm all right, I'm complete, I have no problem. But why did I work so hard and wanted so many surgeries? Why? 
What was that? I don't have to grow either. I'm overgrown already. I don't have to. But why? What is the need? The need is like this. The need is of love. I have so much love that I have to channelize it. If I don't, I'll suffocate. I can't love myself. So this love has to spread. For that I have to have you people who can take this love to others and make them happy. This is a kind of a uh, vision I have. And in this special time it was promised by many people, by many saints, and it is so obvious that you are all specially chosen for this kind of thing. Now how far you understand your importance is a different point. You do for your emancipation, all right? You meditate. But if you are not channelizing the love, the divine love, what is the use? Now supposing I repair something very nicely, I repair this machine nicely, put it right, everything, and I don't speak, what's the use of having this? In the same way, if you work very hard, I know people who get up at four o'clock, have their baths, do meditation, sit down in the night, again they sit down for meditation. But they never go out, they never talk to others, they never spread Sahaja Yoga, they do not give Divine love to others. So how can this great problem of this world be solved that it has no love? It has never known Divine love. It has to be given to them. They have to feel this Divine love, this power of Adi Shakti. They have to know it, otherwise you have been selfish, I would say, that you had a nice time having all this and you have not given to others. This is the reason why Sahaja Yoga sometimes fails to create a proper balanced personality in a human. Some people are like this, that now supposing a Sahaja Yogi has married another Sahaja Yogi, take a position like that. Now my desire is that they should develop a complete understanding of each other, love for each other, but love for Sahaja Yoga and for others. This is the only way we can justify marriage in Sahaja Yoga. Otherwise, why should they marry? But doesn't happen like that. What happens is once they are married, then either they will quarrel, uh, they will ask for divorce. If that doesn't happen, luckily, because in Sahaja Yoga it's so easy to get married, you know. If that doesn't happen, then they start having their own family, their own homes, their they, becoming very small, very, very small, very limited. Did you come to Sahaja Yoga for that? You have to realize your responsibility. See this Mother Earth, how she did, knows her responsibility. She's just made out of nothing but soil, some mud. But look at her, how she's conscious, how she's particular, how she how she's careful, while you, though you have been blessed so much by everything, you are, are you thinking of giving it to others? With twelve disciples, whatever was the problem of Christianity, I mean, it was nothing good job, I must say, but still Christianity spread out. Islam was not a very good job either, it spread out. All those bad jobs have spread out so much, so why not the good job of Sahaja Yoga? It has to spread, it has to go to various places. Try and find out where you can go and talk about it and do something good to others. 
and help them somehow to rise above this common existence of misery, unhappiness and destruction. The time is very short and I think if you see the time, the rate at which we are moving is not proper. We have to be much faster, we have to go much ahead and we have to create much more surge of this through our consistent, very uh, intensive effort. But we, it's a side issue, by the way. Surge Yoga is by the way. And this is why we are failing in our responsibility. We have to learn from the Mother Earth. You might say that, Mataji, how can we be like you? After all, you are Adi Shakti. Many people say, you are Adi Shakti, so what? You see, with one finger you can move things like that. Well, why should I? Why should I? What is the need? So in that reflection that you are me, in that reflection that the Mother Earth is me, in that beautiful creation within you, you have to become very sensitive to the need of the world. What is the need of the world? Today, if you fail, the whole thing will fail forever. Only very few will be there. So the need for you is to spread Sahaja Yoga because this love is not only for you, is not to be enjoyed by you, but is to be enjoyed by as many possible in the whole world. So today we have to decide that as the children of Adi Shakti, we have to go all out, everywhere, every corner, we have to shout and we have to tell loudly what is the time in which we are living and what is the responsibility that you have to fulfill as Sahaja Yogis. There must be some reason why you are here. Like in the beginning, Sahaja Yogis used to ask me, Mother, was I this last life? Was I Shivaji last life? Well, I said, what's the use? You might have been anything, but what are you? Today is much higher. Try to understand. You might be, say, Napoleon. You might be, say, uh, one of the kings, say, or maybe the queen from somewhere. So what? What did they do? Did they raise anybody's Kundalini? Did they have any power? Even the disciples of Christ, or even uh, Muhammad Sahib's disciples, anyone, did they do it? Did they have any understanding of Kundalini? Did they have any love for others that they should give them realization? There were some Sufis, they never gave realization to anyone. There were so many saints who never gave realization to anybody. Muhammad Sahib never gave realization to anybody. Gautam Buddha never gave realization to anybody. Think of it. Christ never gave realization to anybody. Anybody. Krishna did not do it, Rama did not. Nobody but you can do it. You can do it and you know everything about Kundalini. It's a very big thing because you are children of the Adi Shakti. You are here and your mother is here. It's a very, very fortunate thing for me that you are here. I'm very proud of you. But again and again I have to tell you that the work has to be with a faster speed. We have to move with a faster speed and get more people to Sahaja Yoga. It is rather, rather difficult for me to say something forcefully. That's not my nature, you know. Can't get into tempers and cannot get angry. 
and I cannot forcefully say something to you, but if you fail, then only thing will be that you have failed me completely. It means that, nothing less than that, and if you don't want to do it, then I would request all of you to take a vow today that you will spread Sahaja Yoga and you will talk about Sahaja Yoga, know about Sahaja Yoga. There are many who don't know anything. Also it's very surprising, they are Sahaja Yogis, they don't know anything. And don't create problems for me, like marriage, we can't now live with the wife, we can't live with the husband, all sorts of nonsensical problems people create for me in Sahaja Yoga. Are you here to create problems or to remove problems of people? So on the whole, we have done well, I must say, but it's not the final. We have to work faster, with more enthusiasm and joyfully. You don't know what joy you get when you give Realization to somebody. It's the most joyful moment is when you give Realizations to others. Just try, once try, once you enjoy it, then you want more and more and more. Now, after Sahaja Yoga, really, the want disappears into this desire that, my God, this man is going, should I call him and give him Realization? On the street you will feel like, come here, come here, come here, I want to give him something. You make him sit down, give Realization. This will be your style, like mad. You say, oh, no, no, look at this. This gentleman is without any Realization, let us give. We'll have to go to churches, we'll have to go to universities, you have to go to all such congregations where they have no idea about what they can achieve. And then tell them, without any fear, without any malice, you can talk to them and you should tell them, now we are here to help for your good. We have not come for our good, but for your good. Now listen to us. And I'm sure, very sure, that the Kundalini within you will be very happy. She's not happy, you see. She's not happy with people who are not using her fully. So she'll be very happy to help you and do the needful for the emancipation of the whole world. May God bless you.
जय श्री माता जी परम पूज्य श्री माता जी कृपावंत तो होकर आप हमें निर्लिप्त साक्षी बनाइए परम पूज्य श्री माता जी कृपावंत तो होकर आप हमें ऐसी स्थिति प्रदान करें जिससे हम आपकी लीला को देख सकें जो भी घटित हो रहा है उसको साक्षी भाव निर्लिप्त साक्षी भाव से देख सके परम पूज्य श्री माता जी हमसे जो भी कार्य हो जो भी कर्म हो वो सब हम आपके पावन चरणों में रख सके पूर्णतः समर्पित होकर रख सके ऐसी स्थिति हमें प्रदान करें परम पूज्य श्री माता जी आपके प्रति अनन्य भक्ति हो इस तरह का आशीर्वाद और ऐसी ध्यान की स्थिति आध्यात्मिक स्थिति हमें कृपा कर प्रदान कीजिए श्री माता जी आपके पावन चरणों में हमारे कोटि कोटि प्रणाम कलेक्टिव बंधन आज का ध्यान केंद्र यहीं पर संपन्न होता है जुड़े रहने के लिए बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद जय श्री माता जी